Hoki mai ano. hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all doing well. I have decided this morning that I am going to take you for a little walk through the garden and what I am actually planning to do from now on is do a bit of a garden walk through early, mid and late season and this is more for myself really. It's really handy when you're a gardener to have a visual record or a visual diary of what you planted where and when and what the garden looked like and all that kind of thing. So some of you might find it interesting, some of you may not, but uh, that is what is happening this morning. It's Sunday morning, it's not quite 8 o'clock I think, I actually slept in, I'm normally up by 6.30, but uh, I slept in this morning and uh, haven't even had my morning cup of tea. I want to get this done before the neighbours get up, they're building a glass house next door and uh, they will probably be at it again today. Uh, so I want to get that done and it's going to get really hot today like I think they're predicting 28 degrees Celsius which is super hot for this time of the year so I don't really want to be out in the blazing sun wandering around. Um, and if that wasn't enough of an introduction I'm on two weeks holiday from work uh, as I'm starting from tomorrow so I can't tell you how happy and thrilled I am because I definitely needed a break from work so I have the next two weeks to do exactly as I please all right let's crack on with this I'm in the front garden and I think we'll start around here first and uh, and proceed around the back there's not a massive amount to see sort of down this side this is sort of our native side of the of the garden I've got a lovely foxglove that's come up here these normally have quite a red sort of throat. I'll see if I can zoom in. I've got my good camera, my fancy camera that I don't really know how to use. So, no, I don't know. Um, I'm hopeless with the tech stuff. But so we've got some native stuff down here. One of my clients, my dear clients at work, who's in her 90s and still does all her own gardening, gave me a bunch of succulents a couple of weeks ago. She gave me those ones and she gave me these ones as well. So they should do quite well down here because it does get quite dry and the soil's not the best. But this is a bottle brush. This is a uh, native and New Zealand native. I think it's a New Zealand native. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. And some of our little nectar birds absolutely love it. So around here, my magnolia tree that we brought last year didn't flower this year. This is called Vulcan and uh, it's stunning if you're into magnolias. It uh, produces absolutely huge uh, sort of dark burgundy flowers. But uh, it didn't flower so I got very worried and did some research and apparently that's perfectly normal. So. I was like, oh, fuel, because it, it was like $70, and I never spend that amount of money on anything in the garden. But my husband, he's uh, he loves magnolias, so anyway, apparently it takes quite a while to get established. Um, I was looking forward to the flowers this year. Other than that, it's very healthy, and it's grown a lot. So that's good, but, but never mind. So this is the front of the house. My kitchen is in there. And uh, I've got a hydrangea there. My husband grew that one actually from a cutting. And then this is another hydrangea, which is a very late um, sort of developing one. And I can't go past. It's called Candlelight, and it's absolutely beautiful. I think it's called Candlelight. It's sort of a pink and white, and the flowers are like different shape to a normal hydrangea it's absolutely stunning I saw it at the plant shop and I was like I must have it we have some chamomile down here I need to get out here and do some weeding which I'm planning to do before the weather gets too hot and there's a bunch of weeds in there <laughs> this is where we dump a lot of our grass clippings so we need to I need to get in there and have a bit of a have a bit of tidy up camellias. I love camellias, but they make so much mess when they drop their flowers. This little strip down here has all been planted with 
um, marigolds. I had a brain fart there. And there's some lavender there that I've stuck and my husband's <laughs> planted one of his mini dahlias. But yeah, we always plant marigolds down here because it gets quite hot and dry down here. I grew two entire packets from seed so I have masses. And it looks beautiful when they're all out in flower. And then up the driveway, <clears throat> if I stop this video too, it's because someone's walking their dog. <laughs> I don't want to be talking on camera in front of people. I get a bit too embarrassed. So uh, anyway, up here is all our roses. And I underplant them with marigolds as well. We had a really late frost. Well, we had a we typically get frosts right up and until sort of mid-October. But we had a really hard frost and it knocked a lot of plants around. Um, the roses being one. They are starting to come back now but you can see on this one the flower is a little bit mishappen. This is blackberry nip. It normally has beautiful big flowers so they'll come right. They will come right. And then around here we used to have one of the mice, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to cough, <coughs> one of my most hated plants in the world which is an agapanthus in here and I absolutely cannot stand them, hate them, hate them with a vengeance. It took up this entire area and my husband took it out because we both actually really hate them. It took him weeks to get it out. Good morning Manson. Manson's my little shadow and we have put um, roses down here instead so this one's Ingrid Bergman and it's done well although it does have a little bit of mildew on it which I need to take care of and this rose down here is a little patio rose and actually they're lovely lovely people that um, own my horse grazing where Bramble lives gave me this rose when I had to say goodbye to Imaihara. It's called Chameleon and it changes colour uh, as it goes through its uh, its flowers, as the flowers sort of age. This is one of my most favourite shrubs in the entire world. This is called a Daphne. I don't know if you get it in other parts of the world. I'm sure you do. It likes a colder temperature, so it suits our winters really well. I always sort of refer to it as a grandmother plant because it, um, it every grandmother tended to have it in her garden. It's the most beautiful scent. Uh, the flowers are the most beautiful scent you have ever smelled in your entire life. If you can get a hold of one and if you live in the right area, they are just so beautiful. Uh, they can be a little bit finicky as well, but um, our, one's, our one's just doing really well. But Oh, they're lovely. And I've had a lovely display of Lily of the Valley this year. Haven't I? <laughs> um, oh, they're so beautiful. They're sort of a real English woodland. They're actually a bulb, and I'm talking about these little white flowers here. And the bulbs, it would appear, are really hard to get a hold of now. I actually believe that Kate Middleton had uh, had these flowers in her um, flower arrangement, you know, when she got married. Uh, yeah, the bulbs are apparently really hard to get. I had a quick Google search and I couldn't find them anywhere. So we inherited these with the house and I've got quite a few clumps of them, but the smell's insane. It's so, it's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. A bit like you, eh? Right, let us go around the back. I'll show you. Had some lovely bluebells this year as well. They've all finished. I need to cut the flower spikes off. And the front door and the broom that I made. Lovely heliotrope. And this lilac was up at the back. We actually moved it, which is why it's only had, it's only flowered uh, minimally. It's only had one flower head on it. 
Uh, it was up back in the fairy garden and it just didn't do any good up there. It was way too shaded, so we've moved it here. It survived and next year and you know the years after it will get uh, a lot better. Oh, I can smell that lily of the valley. Oh, it's lovely. So I have a few little other bits and pieces that I've planted here. I've got some poppies and uh, just other random things. Beautiful big lemon tree. I love this canopy that happens when the ash tree flowers. Sort of, they join the ash tree and the lemon tree join. I, I, I just I love that and the flowers on that flowering ash are absolutely gorgeous they smell just like vanilla I've still got masses of lemons I'm actually going to make some lemon curd possibly today I am thinking possibly also that I may make either today or tomorrow tomorrow's going to rain apparently which will be good I may make my elderflower champagne and I do want to film that so we'll see how we go today but uh lots of lemons up there. I've been making lemonade and we eat a lot of lemons which is good because this tree produces masses of them. So down here I have potatoes. This is all getting ready for my basil to go in and check it out I have got ripening strawberries. The neighbour's kid is also crying. The neighbour's kid is always crying it drives me friggin nuts. Uh, apparently the price of strawberries in New Zealand is going to skyrocket this summer because we don't have the pickers for them because of COVID we normally have a lot of overseas pickers come and of course they can't come because the borders are shut so they reckon the price of, uh, of strawberries is going to go up and we just don't have the, the you know, well I was going to say we don't have the population because we don't have a big population but we do but uh, people that don't work are actually pretty lazy <laughs> and don't want to be going picking strawberries and earning an income so and there you go anyway so that's a banana pepper in there my tulips were absolutely gorgeous this year and uh, I need to cut them back and store them away till next spring little rose down there this is sort of our main border I suppose in the back garden yes Manson um, this is my prize manuka. You guys probably know it as manuka. This is another New Zealand native, and this is where the manuka honey comes from. And the bees collect from this tree. It's got flower buds on it. It's magnificent healing properties. These are another one of my favourites. These are called granny's bonnets they're called granny's bonnets here but I think uh, uh, you probably know them as columbine we have weird names for things in New Zealand I don't know lots of roses lavender I brought this yesterday it's a miniature sunflower I've never actually seen them before I just got two so I'm wondering if I can get the seed because I would like to grow these um, I'd like to grow them on mass Lots of calendula, I need to come out and harvest calendula. Beautiful poppies. And my delphiniums are getting ready to burst forth. I can't wait till this flowers. Uh, this is a black poppy I believe. I have a few of them that I managed to get, get growing over the winter. Catnip. I've got some sweet peas down there. They're not doing particularly well. I've put them in the wrong spot, but I wanted to grow them and I just shoved them in there thinking, oh, they'll be fine. They probably will flower, but they're not quite as vigorous as they should be, I don't think. I've got some henbane in here and more poppies and some cornflowers and things. My mugwort, which I shifted from beside the house, that's doing well. Another hydrangea. You can see where the frost damaged the tips which is really annoying but oh well valerian this is another one of my tr prize uh, shrubs this is called winter sweet and um, 
it's another really old fashioned shrub so at the moment it doesn't look like anything like it's quite a boring shrub when it's uh, like in the summer and the winter is when it comes into its own and it has flowers on the bare branches and the smells just so strong it's so beautiful and it's so unique um, it's just lovely if you can get your hands on a winter sweet then it's another one if you like old fashioned plants it's just beautiful marjoram oregano parsley and chives down here and my wormwood is doing really well in fact I need to harvest some of that there's not much to see down here in this old bath which actually came out of our last house I've got an absolutely mammoth cabbage that's forming its head and some silver beet and some lettuces in there the cyclamens were brilliant um, they've just about finished flowering now so they need to be taken care of they were lovely they were lovely all through winter and I have some mini ones over here as well and don't mind that that's my compost thing that lives out here for my kitchen scraps peppermint this lilac was absolutely stunning it's coming near the end of its um, blooming but it was absolutely gorgeous got some veggies down there and uh, another hydrangea that's a blue one that's a newish one rosemary another lilac that we've moved sort of a different variety and that one's done actually the best that it's ever done um, it was totally in the wrong spot before so it's, it's doing pretty good mint geranium and Coming down here, lots of things in pots. I've got hydrangeas down here and sweet williams are the flowering ones at the front. Um, so yeah, they should be looking really healthy, but they don't because of the frost. <sighs> Never mind, this is another granny's bonnet, a different colour bun, that's lovely. I've got pumpkins and squash in there, and I've actually got... Um, herbs in here, I haven't opened this yet and no. I can't do it one handed but I've got skullcap, um, vervain and orange balm which is a new one for me I didn't know you could get orange balm uh, I knew you could get lemon balm because I've, I've grown it before but um, I saw this orange balm and I was like hmm the seed, so I, uh, I grabbed it and it's doing really well and I've got heaps of basil because I grow masses of that and there's various other veggies in there and I, these are all the marigolds that I have yet still to plant. A very messy calf but we won't go in there. This is the fairy garden up here. So behind that toadstool down there uh, is a tree trunk from next door that um, hubby's had to try and it was pushing the, the fence paling out so we've had to sort of try and sort that out but it kind of looks like a fairy door so I might paint it yet. I don't know. I've got impatience up here. I think you guys might know them as busy lizzies. Always plant them in these tires every year. And this is, a, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, a guam or guem, G U E M. They are lovely. I have an angelica growing through my compost bin. So I'm not entirely sure how that happened, but we've just left it. There's another one there, and I did clean this up, I need to actually come back through and do a bit more weeding, but I had soap wart everywhere, and I wished I had never ever grown soap wart. It spreads, and soap wart is sort of the stuff down here. Uh, the flowers are gorgeous, it's a really old, old herb, but it spreads, and it's almost impossible to get rid of. Um, it's way worse than mint in fact so never mind I've got some hellebores in here my massive big beautiful bay tree which is just colossal some lambs here comfrey oh there's all sorts in here my rue which has been moved about six times and hopefully it's in its permanent position but yeah I might need to get another one as a backup because I do like my rue and I need to get rid of that pot over there with those dead 
violas in. Uh, what have we got over here? We've got more mugwort. These are all potatoes in pots. We've got a blueberry. A couple of uh, hellebores which I've moved and they're doing really well. And the latest baby brought a lovely wisteria which has just gone gangbusters. And this has been beautiful, even though it hasn't had a massive amount of flowers on it, because it's only you know it's only new. The smell's been the so strong, it's so beautiful. I really missed having a wisteria. My sweet peas are growing really good up here, up against this trellis, and my rhubarb will be actually that's ready to be harvested now. Yay! Rhubarb crumble. So this is the main veggie garden. The corn is coming up, you probably can't see because there's a few little weeds, although we've kept the weeds under control this year, but uh, there is corn in there, and we've got, oh there's uh, a row of beans in between the corn and these carrots, and butter beans, and we've got beetroot, the tomatoes are in, I grow heirloom tomatoes every year, beans up the back, there's a grapevine too where that black cloth is, that's there to protect it in case we get a late frost. Potatoes. Potatoes are all in here. I've got a sprouting broccoli up the back and these are cabbages and the raspberries. Oh I just can't wait for my raspberries to start producing fruit. They look brilliant. They look so healthy. Parsley there and a tumbling tomato. And uh, one of the cats has been in here, I can see the bear patch, but um, these are shallots. I've got uh, cucumbers either side of this climbing frame and we've got some lettuces in there. And another strawberry bed because I love strawberries. And in this one we've got, oh and there's red onion in that first bed as well. Um, and here we've got garlic the garlic. Garlic down there, um, red onion, more red onion and lettuces down in there. So that is it. That's it, that's the garden thus far. Very very happy with it. Very happy, it's, um, it's just my solace, my garden is my solace, it's where I come and connect to my path and it's where I come and relax and it's just I'm I'm always in my garden always if I'm not working in it I'm sitting in it reading a book having a brew and just being out amongst out amongst it all and I especially love early morning in the garden when the world hasn't quite woken up yet and it's all I don't know sort of feels like they're the only one alive I, I don't know I just I love I love it I love my wee I love my wee home and garden. I really do. Okay, right. Well, thanks for watching. I'm sorry this was a bit long, but you know, <laughs> there's a lot to see. And uh, I will catch you next time. Bye.